going to discuss avocado dyeing and Ogden cami making and rose hip body oil. So that's the show I have for you today. Thanks for being here. All right, botanical dyeing. My latest dye project was avocado pits and skins. In episode three, I did do an avocado pit and skin dye together. This time I did them separately. And there wasn't a whole lot of difference. I used an alum mordant and I cooked the skins in one pot and the pits in another, mainly following direction. And this is a nice little book this botanical color at your fingertips. Great little book. She also has a fabulous um, Instagram account. Uh, if you are on Instagram and into natural dyeing, I would highly recommend um, following her. And also in her stories, like her story archive, she's got all kinds of information on dyeing and she is big into the avocado pits and skin dyeing so she's always got something going on there anyway it's a great book very inspiring and let's see I will show you what I dyed this was just a white shirt that I got at the thrift store and this is the avocado pits so that turned out quite nice. And then I also dyed this hemp jersey knit. And this is the pits as well. There's a little bit of streaking. I didn't do the chalk bath or the wheat germ bath. So there is some streaking. And then this is the skins. So the skins and the pits actually are very similar. The skins are just a little bit um, beigey, or I guess. And the stones or pits are pinky, pinkier. So I haven't created anything with those fabrics yet. I just got a new serger, so I've been messing around with that and maybe I'll make some things with these avocado pits and skins. So not much new to report on there. I, I liked doing them separately. I don't know if I'll do them separately next time or together. I guess it would just really depend on how much plant material you had. So that last avocado dye was episode three so that was that was a while ago i probably did that in march or april so that was several months worth of saving my pits and skins and a lot of people recommend freezing them i 
dehydrated mine. I live in a very dry climate and I have a wood stove so things dry up very quickly. And I just dried them and then put them in a jar, a glass jar on those shelves back there. And there they, there they sat till I was ready to do the dye project, which was a lot of fun. So, you know, in a year or so, I'll, I'll be ready to experiment with the avocado pits and skins. Um, up next, I'm going to do, I have, I'm reusing my mordant bucket and mordant from this dye, and I'm going to dye some onion skins tonight, I think, because I have a lot of those also. Anyway, that is that for the dyeing. Alum Mordant pits and skins separately. Pits are a little pinker. Skins are a little more on the beige side. On to the sewing. I really liked sewing this pattern. This is the Ogden Cami. Very, very, very easy pattern. I would definitely say this is a beginner's pattern. If you have any sewing experience, this is going to come together quite quickly for you. I don't really have um, a whole lot to say about the changes. I did make it a little bit longer than, than what it called for here. Very easy to follow. I made three of those. I'll show you those right now. So this is the first one that I made. It, this I made in the large. <laughs> I, I don't know what was going on. I cut the pattern out like a year ago, and I don't really know what happened. I thought I cut it to my specific size, but I really didn't. I just cut the pattern out. So when I made this, it is too big for me, but that's fine. I've got some people I can gift it to. The pattern doesn't call for doing an enclosed seam. It just calls for doing, you know, just opening it up and ironing it flat. So right away, I decided that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to make sure there was an enclosed seam, especially for working with the linens and things that unravel quickly. This is a cotton linen blend, and that's what I would recommend for if you are going to work with linen with this pattern, I would do the linen cotton blend because it's like stretchier, whereas regular linen, not so much, unless it's washed linen. Now, if it's washed linen, it will have a little bit more pull. But I'm happy with this. It turned out very easy. I Something I love about this pattern is the back is V'd and down a little bit farther. I think that's very cute, cute back. It has uh, a little like bodice part liner on the inside, so it just goes part way down. You could make it all the way if you wanted, or it would be pretty too to make a longer lining on the inside. Ooh, that's a good idea. I just thought of that right now. And then, so it came down here, hung down a little bit farther, and then it could be two different colors or coordinating fabrics. That's pretty. I might have to give that a try. It would also be very easy to turn this into a dress as well. You just make it, you know, longer. That It's very versatile and it's very, very easy to follow and I would highly recommend it. So the next one I made, I decided to make it a little bit longer and in just black linen. So this is um, how that one turned out. Again, the V is a little bit longer in the back. And then this fabric, I dyed this 
uh, last fall. This is, I covered it in the last episode, episode eight. This is a spruce cone dye. And this is a hemp jersey knit. So I did make the Ogden Cami in a jersey knit, and I like it. Here's the V in the back. I also made it a little bit longer, and then has the lining on the inside. This turned out this turned out very very nice. I I like the knits. It was a good also good for me to experiment with my new serger and see if I'm gonna keep it or exchange it. I just got it, so I'm still kind of working out the kinks, but this turned out quite nice, quite nicely. I'm looking forward to making a dress with the Ogden cami top. I just think it's a beautiful fit. Quite happy with it. Mm. I don't, yep, the only alteration is making it a little bit longer. I highly recommend it. Very, very easy, especially if you're just beginning. This would even work as a first pattern to try. I'm getting ready to make a body oil, a rose hip body oil. It's one of my favorite herbal oils. It is, we've had such a mild winter that I have been collecting lots and lots of rose hips. They, um, they're still great and quite harvestable. Here are a few of them. These ones I'm going to dry because I have some big plans as far as soap making goes with the rose hips. In fact, I have a gallon of rose hips in um, olive oil, and I have been infusing these since October. This is going to be strained and used in soap making. And I'm going to dry these, and these are going to be some part of the soap making process. And this will be an essential oil-free tallow bar. I also have this of um, avocado oil infusing right now. This is for a body oil. It's uh, quite popular in the shop. But today I'm going to show you how to make your own, if that interests you. So you want to start with a clean jar. And if you've seen any videos of me processing rose hips, um, they're, I like to break them up in the food processor first. And I just clean out, clean them the best I can, get rid of the ones that are overly hard, which this time of year, there's several that need to be kind of pulled out and I pull the top part off. Let me see here. Like um, this rose hip here. If you see it has this little top part, I will pull those off and set that off to the side and then just throw those in the compost. But you know, you just grab the top, pull that off, do that to several rose hips, then pop them in your food processor. This is loud and obnoxious, but it's really helpful for processing the rose hips. I just give it a few pulses, and as you can see, they have broken open there. Several of them have broken open, and ones that have not, ones that are still whole, that's fine. That is totally fine. I'm going to set that off to the side. Grab a spoon and get this in the jar. I like to fill the jar about half full. A little more or a little less is fine. Three-fourths full is nice, but half will 
beautiful work. And that's what this is about. Um, so you have your plant material here. You get that all situated. For body oiling, I like avocado oil best. You can use whatever oil you like. The olive oil is nice for salves and soaps. It's a little heavy for the skin. So I like the avocado oil. Um, jojoba is really nice, but fairly expensive. So it's just personal preference. I just get the regular avocado oil at Costco and it's a little more refined than the extra virgin avocado oil. You might like that. I tend to go with this since I'm making products for, for resale. I tend to go a little bit more refined. But um, if you're making a small amount just for yourself, the extra virgin avocado or olive oil does tend to have a shorter shelf life. So that's why I don't use it. But if I were making it just for myself in a small amount, I'm, I might go that route. But this will be body oil. So I just fill it up there. And look at that. Isn't that beautiful? It's all getting mixed in there. You can also give it a stir. Stir it up. In fact, I might stir that other one there. It's awfully pretty. And then I put a breathable top with a rubber band and I will stir this for several days until the plant material settles to the bottom. Once the plant material settles to the bottom, you don't need to keep stirring it anymore. But if there's plant material sticking out of the oil, it can, it can mold. And next we want to label, label and date. So I usually put rose hips. And this is avocado oil, so I wanna make sure and write that down, what kind of oil it is. And then I always put the date. It's December 29th. Yep, December 29th. And I label that. And then all the oils are put over there on that shelf. It's out of direct sunlight, which is nice. You don't want the direct sunlight in your oil. The sun can um, cause the plant material and the oils to break down a lot quicker and the oils can go rancid sometimes. I'm gonna give this a stir while we're chatting. And then this can infuse for however long you want. I, um, I created this oil in September and I am going to strain this. I just ordered, I've run out of labels, so I ordered some labels, and when those get here, I will strain these, and they will be strained and bottled and back up in the shop for you all. Anyway, that is that. And the smell. Rosehip oil is so sweet. I mean, it smells like candy. And then it's endless what you can do. Full body oiling, or this is just really nice on your face. Um, whatever, whatever you like. I encourage you to experiment with. I'm back. I thought I'd do a little chit chatting, tell you what I've been up to before I sign off here. It's been a while since I podcasted. The last one I think came out in October. So I had a few months there. The holiday season is very, very busy for me. Um, starting in October, I just pretty much work every day to build up all of my stashes, sewing, soap, 
the herbal apothecary and that's just basically what I did and then I started I kicked off my holiday season I did a holiday pop-up the week before Thanksgiving the Friday night before Thanksgiving here locally in town and that was a lot of fun had a lot of well I didn't have a lot of people show up but the people who showed up they were there they were there to shop and they were there to um, buy my stuff I was the only person there so it was a nice little entry into the holiday vending then I did the shop small Saturday also here in town in our town Eureka Montana and that was very nice lots of people came out town was just busy it was nice to see everybody and then moving on the week after that I went to 50 miles away to a town called Whitefish Whitefish Montana and I did a two-day event there it's a Friday night and a Saturday day it's called the handmade holiday that was a lot of fun I stayed with a friend of mine down there in the flathead came home and then the following week was um, at one of our local breweries HA Homestead Ales it's on Graves Creek so it's about 10 miles south of Eureka and it was just we had so much fun a lot of my friends work there and so they were there it was great to catch up with everybody it was kind of a slow night but that's fun too it, we were at the brewery what do you have to complain about <laughs> And that about finished up my selling in person. I did lots of online sales too, which was very nice. And I had a sale and then I had lots of last minute shoppers all the way up until Christmas. Um, just stopping by my house to buy things or calling me and I would deliver things around town to people. So it wrapped up in a wonderful, wonderful way. And I just want to say, if you purchased anything from me or supported me in any way or, or anything, or just here now, thank you. Thank you. It was, I wouldn't be able to do all this without your support. So it's, it feels good. It's wonderful. And then we had Christmas. Christmas was good. Christmas is mellow. I keep things pretty mellow around the holidays because I'm so busy producing. I don't have the creativity for my home. Like a person needs at the holiday season for all of the decorating and the baking and all of that I'm I, I don't really have it in me to do all of that so it worked out it worked out well and my kids that you know they're they're easy kids so they they pretty much were fine with whatever as usual it was a good holiday though we had a nice little Christmas morning and uh, we have my boyfriend's family is very we're very close with them and so we did lots of festivities there Christmas Eve dinner and we did um, a white elephant socky not stocking a white elephant sock exchange so that was pretty fun you just filled your sock with whatever whatever you wanted to so I had been peddling my wares all over the place so I just picked up little things here and there um, I had like a com compostable um, dish rag basically some dish towels some stickers fun little things some candy some mints a bottle of wine I stuck a bottle of wine in the sock and so then that was mine and the kids also participated in it they filled theirs mostly with like jerky and candy and just little things um, already filled his with jerky and uh, bullets 
and so just kind of whatever you wanted to do and then we just did the traditional white elephant so we put all of our socks on the table there were 15 of us so we all took a turn drawing the drawing you know your number in the regular white elephant fashion and so you get down to the last person and they can steal anybody's gift that they want so that was really fun and it was really nice to just take a break from all of the crafting from all of the sewing and I just was really able and I also took a little break from social media which was nice and I just cleaned my house top to bottom I just scrubbed the walls scrubbed the floor and completely took everything out of every room and then rearranged it put it all back together a different way I did that with my sewing room which was turned out really nice and um, then that that brought me up to about the new year the kids my kids are so easy so it doesn't really matter having them home I mean they can pretty much cook themselves their own food and my son now he now has a car so he is driving so it's very 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 easy we just sort of hung out and I did my own thing and then a few days into the new year I was able to I was like okay I'm ready to podcast I'm ready to die I'm ready to experiment with some new things and I was really able to dive in with a completely clean workspace which was really nice and then let's see today today's the first day back to school the kids are back in school and I'm also back in the back in the swing of things moving on to my next dye project excited for that excited to experiment with more patterns and just really dive into January because January is so fun. Although we haven't really gotten a lot of snow yet. We've had a very, very mild winter. The rest of the country is getting blasted, but we are in our little corner of Montana have been staying quite, quite mild, which is fine, but I know it's coming. It's coming very soon, but I think I'll sign off for, for now. Again, my name is Dacia. I am the maker here of everything. If you want to follow along on social media, I am Simply Josephine on Instagram. And I also have a website, simplyjosephine.com. If you want to check out any of my offerings, you can also subscribe there at my website and get on the e email list. I put out a a newsletter, email, not very often, once or twice a month. And that's about, that's about it. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about anything, leave a comment and um, I'll chat with you about your question. Bye.